up to this point. Uh, we've got the pop-ups happening. The fields um, get populated. Or we have cancel. So cancel should work. It just kicks you back to view. OK, next I want to make update work. If I try to click it now, don't click it now. But if you were to click it, it would refresh the screen like it does when the, when the form doesn't work as we expected. So that's, again, the issue about there is the default, ed, the default event of submitting a form, which is to refresh the screen. We want to prevent the default. OK, that's one thing. The other thing is then we want to take what the person changed here and put it back to the database. So if they had originally misspelled it, uh, actually it was 1937. Uh, well, I want to click uh, Update here. And I want the JavaScript to read the change and then save it into the database, not as a new entry, but to edit, make a revision of the old data. And so this will work for anything that is currently populated or anything that wasn't populated. So if I never wrote any notes into this comic, I want to write some notes to the comic. JavaScript will read what's there and save it. So we need to deal with clicking Submit. Uh, that happens because we've got Form, Edit Comics Info. Uh, we should have created the object for that, for that form. L form comics info. Yes. Okay. So we've got a, we've got the form. We've got the object that represents that form. We need the event listener to listen for the for the event of submitting the change to run the function. We'll go to our event listeners. Line 663. Event listener for preventing default refresh when submitting form and checking what was changed and storing the updated version of the data into the database pouch db so we've got the generic on click when it's a button that just does what it needs to do, but we've had the instances of when the person submits, we need to capture the um, default behavior of refresh, the event of refresh, and cancel it, prevent default. So our syntax here is the anonymous function passing through the event into a function that doesn't exist yet. Function form edit comics or comic info. We had function edit edit comic prep to prepare what we're going to change. Then we'll have function. Uh, Oh wait, okay, if we're going by the names of our that we've done before, let's actually make it consistent then. Just simply function edit comic info event. So we've had uh, the function to prepare to edit the comic, the function that cancels editing the comic, the function that will actually edit the info of the comic. We need to capture the default event of clicking Submit, pass it into the function so that we can do prevent default, the, re the refresh. So we'll 
back up to where we've got the the function definitions. Here's a brand new one. Function to replace the uh, old data of a document with new data. To our console to confirm that this function is running. And more importantly, event.preventDefault. Prevent the default behavior of refreshing the screen. So what we need to do is check what has been written into those into those fields and then replace old data with new data. So we'll create a variety of new variables here. Check what's in the edit comic input fields. We'll create variables for them. dollar val the value of in title edit is equal to jQuery selector pound in title edit dot val so selecting the input field with that ID this time we will check the value so we don't put anything in the parentheses. We set the value with something in the parentheses. Here we're checking the value, and then we are storing it equals into that variable there, the value of in title edit, comma, because I also want to do that for val in number edit pound in number edit val comma also then for val in year edit in year edit so for all the fields val in publisher now in notes edit And then semicolon, because I've strung together with one instance of the var keyword. I've created one, two, three, four, five, six. I've created six variables at once. So I've got the comma at the end and semicolon at the end of that, because I've done six of them at once.
So once we confirm the comic in question, we will reinsert the data into the database into the same document and its fields. with a new field underscore rev revision a new version of the data whenever we deleted the data technically there was a new version of it a new revision the version where we deleted it well here now it might make more sense because it's going to be a revision I fix the year so it's version 2 of the data. Correct here. Maybe I first saved the comic, but I didn't add a publisher or a, or a note. Later, I can add the note. It'll be version 2. Later, I'll add more notes, version 3. And I have as many revisions as, as I want. There is a limit based on the, the size of the database on the device, which is hundreds of megabytes, basically the size of the capacity on the device. So you can have as many revisions as you want. And with revisions, there is a way to build in like undo and such. But we'll start it off easy in terms of I just want to make a change to the data that already exists. So once we confirm the comic in question, that's going to be a db.get. We need to get the data. We need to get the comic in question. The comic in question again is temp comic to delete, which again is now named logically wrong, but technically correct. And the result of that is the usual failure or success. Okay, so I need to break apart that curly brace for .get, and we can note that that's end of .get. There's the if else of failure versus success. As we've done before, we'll have failure first. Error getting this comic to edit. this comic so remember uh, when we try to get the success that is returned is the data of the comic such as the title field so success we're about to edit this comic and it'll show the title of the comic we're about to edit After confirming the comic in question, we put the data back into the database 
based on underscore ID and underscore rev. So that'll work with db.put. We're going to store data into the database. We're going to store the data in each of those fields, keeping in mind the, the ID, the underscore ID of the comic in question, and taking into account a new revision number. Let's do this to set up the skeleton. Curly braces, comma, function, parentheses, curly brace. Well, this is the usual in terms of we have some pouch command with some option and some result. Well, I'm starting to write this with curly braces, so that's going to be in JSON format. And uh, this is, these are the fields that we're going to store back into the database. Uh, I wrote it right away here already because I want to break these curly braces so that it's readable like this. Because remember, we have a title of the comic. We have a um, number of the comic. Year. Publisher, notes, barcode, and then we have the unique identifier, which differentiates this piece of data from every other piece of data in the database, underscore ID. And now we need one more, underscore rev. No final comma. It's in JSON format. You've got the key and value pairs, comma, key and value pair, comma, etc., until the final key and value pair, no final comma. All of that's in curly braces. All of that is our first parameter of put, put this data into the database. These placeholders are going to be dot or dollar $val in title, edit, which is the variable that holds what did they type into or not change in that input field. Store it into title. Store the val in number. The val in year. So forth. So this is pretty cool because it serves to, if the person made a change to the notes, write that data into the database. If they didn't make any changes, just return whatever was already there into those input fields back into the notes. And what's in those input fields comes from the edit comics uh, prep. Remember, prep was about what comic are we dealing with? show those, show the form, and then set the value of those input fields to what was in the database. 
So it'll just pass it back in if they never made a change. If they made a change, it'll pass in what is new, because what is new is checked here in the make these variables check what those values are. ID and rev are special cases. It, they're not based on what the person typed into those boxes. They're based on success dot underscore ID. There is every item in in pouch automatically has the I, has the underscore ID field. It needs it. It's there automatically. It's part of the specification. Um, the particular ID of this comic is from the success object db.get yes it's the comic we're trying to get this is the comic now I'm trying to edit now revision very similarly success dot underscore rev there is some randomly generated number that keeps the versions of the data <coughs> uh, organized and here we're saying uh, let's I'm trying to save the data. I'm trying to put into an ID that already exists a new version of the data. And sort of behind the scenes, it automatically knows to say, OK, now we've got version 2 of the data, or 3, or 12. Note, use success dot underscore ID and success dot underscore rev so it quote knows that it's an update to the data and not new data or a new new document It's not that we're creating a new one, we're telling it we are saving data to this ID and there has already been a version 1. Here it is. So behind the scenes it will say, great, let me create version 2. So make sure you've got success dot underscore ID, no spaces here. Obviously that means something different. So all of this is one item. OK, well, here, we're it, behind the scenes, it will create a new version number. We've done our part, which is to store the data in an existing ID. Okay. Then the result, as usual, is going to be failure or success. So then we need to deal with that. So here we've got failure, success. If there's a failure, we put it to the console, we deal with it, or else there's a success. Su success means behind the scenes, the database has changed. But in the front end, nothing changes unless we change it. Remember, whenever we would save a brand new comic, the table would not redraw itself unless we explicitly called that function. We're going to need to do that, as well as in theory, right now we're on the pop-up screen showing the comic information. Uh, so that's going to need to be refreshed as well, because we've made changes to the comic. So I'm going to break apart the failure success callback function. And dot put of saving the new version of the document.
So that's an if else. If failure error updating the data or else success. After successfully updating the data behind the scenes in Pouch, we need to redraw the info screen and the table and close this screen because we're sort of at three different levels. We, on the View Comics screen, PG View Comics, we've got a table that needs to change. We then click the info button, which has the info of the comic. That's got to refresh. And then on top of that, we're on the screen where we're making changes. So we got to close that to go back to view, to go back to the bottom there. So here we'll say, now that data in pouch is updated. We draw the info screen, then the comic table, which is view comic screen, view comics screen, and close the edit comics screen. Here's the part where this is going to be tedious because we need to redraw that info screen. That info screen is made up of back over several hundred lines back. We've got um, show comics info function where we've said on the first paragraph display the title on the fifth paragraph display the, the notes so I think to save ourselves a little bit of effort here uh, I'm gonna copy and paste and make changes find the spot where you've got div view comics info paragraph equals zero we're going to copy all of that, which then we're going to change to show the latest version of the data. So in my case, line 510 to 514, the zeroth paragraph, first, second, third, fourth paragraph, I'm going to copy all of that. And in this else statement, I'm going to paste it in because we're still dealing with the same with the same idea in terms of there is the zero width paragraph in the view comics info screen, which has a name and a number and such. 
what's going to change is not this, not the, um, not the success dot title. Um, this success object isn't the same thing anymore. The last time we had success is is when we were trying to put the data. We don't actually get the title that way. So all of these that are success dot whatever. These are going to be the val in title edit, val in number edit. It's going to be the last version of what they typed into those boxes. The last version, which is the which is the, the changes, the latest version of the data. So if they typed in something to those input fields, that's the latest version of the data that's going to go back into those paragraphs. Val in year. Val in publisher. And notes. And uh, one more line, because now we've got barcode. This is an example where control D might be very useful. If you uh, just have your mouse on a particular line, we can duplicate the line, control D. We need to change this. So now we're dealing with paragraph equals 5. It's not the notes, it's the barcode. And then it's about in barcode it. Paragraph equals five. This is the barcode, and it's val in notes uh, or val in barcode edit. Okay, so now that the data is updated, redraw the info screen. That's what this does. It refills in what's in the info screen. Then the comic table. The comic table is drawn via function show comics prep function. The purpose of that function is to check the database get the latest version of the data from the database, pass it into the function that creates the table, and then we've got a table with, with changes. Let's say we misspelled a comic and such. And then lastly, close this edit comic screen. This is when we reference the pop edit Comics info pound sign like when we did cancel we needed to close the dialog box well now we need to close it because we've made changes we don't need that edit screen anymore
right, so if I, uh, if I run this, I should now have the functionality of being able to edit. I'm going to try it this way first. I'm going to save a brand new comic, just very obviously here. I won't put a publisher. I won't put notes. That gets saved. So I've got that comic right there. When I go to info, I see the info. I want to edit, so I add a publisher and notes. So it automatically populates that. I won't touch those yet. I'll put a publisher, Z Comics. I won't put a note yet. Update. The console is saying, OK. Uh, the comic in question is ZZ. There's the ID of it. The edit comic is running. Success. We're about to edit this comic. ZZ. Successfully true. We made a change. OK, then we have to prep again. We have to redraw the table. We've got that new data. It closed the edit screen to take us back to the info screen. A moment ago I had no publisher. Now there's a publisher. If I edit it. Publisher was saved. Now I put, can put some notes. First and last issue. Very rare. Let's say I misspelled and I didn't see it. OK, update that. Console is saying it's doing its thing. And now I've got some new data here. Oops, I misspelled that. Let me go back and make one more change. And maybe capitalize the comic. Update that. So that changes. It changed data that existed in the fields. It changed data that was empty fields. When I close that, it changed there too. When I go look at my app memory, Index DB, this user's database by sequence. I had a version of ZZ Comic with revision 1. Here it is doc ID and revision. There's the ID, revision 1 plus unique string. Then there was another version of the data. The thing that got changed was the publisher. I added a publisher, and it's version 2, etc. Version 3, when I changed the, the notes, 3 dash whatever. And then finally, the fourth version, when I capitalized the title of the comic, I properly spelled my notes. It's version 4. So the idea is that we're reusing dot put, but more importantly with uh, not noting the ID, the unique ID, and the revision number. And then behind the scenes, it added two, three, four, whatever, as many as you want, plus the rest. And it keeps track internally of the different versions, and then um, it made the change. And then on the front end, we have to do this legwork about uh, redraw the info screen, redraw the table and close the dialog. Okay, let's take our second break to confirm that this works, and then um, we'll go on with, with more coding. We're getting to the place now where we can start to add the features of uh, scanning the barcode and scanning for a photo.